What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again on the channel. We do a lot of PC builds and one thing I kind of gloss over a lot is extra storage for your build. And this is something I usually run into an issue with for myself. I mean, I don't choose enough storage most of the time. And usually I just go with a single M.2 SSD. I run my operating system from it and do everything else from it. This system has a two terabyte M.2 drive and I still just don't have enough room for all of the games that I want to install, especially with the larger game sizes nowadays. Even something like Forza Horizon 5 is over 140 gigs now. So in 2025, even a two terabyte drive is feeling a bit small. But recently, Seagate reached out to me about their internal mechanical drives, and I figured I could make a video on this because, again, it's something that I kind of gloss over, and having more storage now is definitely a must because I usually find myself deleting a game and then having to re-download it a few days later. And with games being so large, uh, depending on your internet connection, it can take a while to re-download that game. So in this video, I figured I'd give you a quick rundown on how to choose an internal mechanical hard drive for your PC. I've got four of Seagate's most popular hard drives here, and we're gonna be starting out with their Exos. This is more of a hard drive for a data center, but it does offer some really amazing read and write speeds. And in most cases, you can get out cheaper adding more of the Exos drives than you could with the Iron Wolf Pro. And it really comes down to the data recovery services that are included with each drive. They're not included with the Exos. And another thing to keep in mind with the Exos is these are made for a data center. So with this, power consumption is higher than the other drives we have on the table. The 16 terabyte version up to around 10 watts, as opposed to the 16 terabyte of the Iron Wolf Pro coming in at around 6.8 watts. Moving over to the Iron Wolf Pro, and this is something that you'll see in a lot of NAS systems, be it at home or commercial NAS systems. In fact, these are the drives that I use in my home NAS, and uh, I've been running this thing basically continuously for about four years. I haven't had an issue with it. I've got it set up with four drives, uh, two are running in RAID, so we've got some redundancy there just to make sure I got those extra backups in case anything goes wrong. But these are workhorses and it's a go-to for a lot of people with up to a 550 terabyte yearly workload and a five year limited warranty. It's hard to go wrong with these Iron Wolf Pro drives. Next on the list, we've got the Seagate Skyhawk AI video hard drive made for surveillance systems. You can get these up to 24 terabytes each and they support 64 HD cameras and 32 additional AI streams. And just like the Iron Wolf Pro, 550 terabyte yearly workload and 2.5 million hours mean time between failures. Again, these were specifically made for AI surveillance systems made to run 24 hours a day. And the final one we have here is the good old Barracuda. This is a 24 terabyte drive. This is what I would use in my gaming PC for supplemental storage. This is gonna store all of my Steam games, my Epic games, uh, Microsoft games, and I've got a big library. So I do need a ton of storage here. These have been great hard drives for gaming PCs and they offer these anywhere from one terabyte up to 24 terabytes. This is a 7200 RPM drive here and I believe they used to make slower ones, but everything that I see over on their website right now, at least for the larger drives, 16 and 24 are 7200. And installation is a breeze. The PC I'm gonna be installing this in does have the removable hard drive bracket down here in the lower chassis. We can fit two 3.5 inch drives here, one on top, one in the chassis itself. And the removable rack that I have here does have anti-vibration feet on it. So uh, when this thing is spinning up, it's not gonna shake your PC. You're probably not even gonna hear this once everything's closed up. Got everything set up. Now I just need to slide it in the bottom of the chassis and it just makes it a lot easier for me to remove this bracket to install the drive. Now I can plug in power and data. And with this setup, I'm actually running Windows 11 Pro from an M.2 SSD. So we're gonna get in there now and we do need to set this drive up. Okay, so now that we've got the 24 terabyte Barracuda drive installed, if we check out this PC, you'll notice it's not listed and that's because it's not initialized. We'll need to initialize it real quick. All that we're seeing here is my SSD. To do this, we're just gonna search for partition, create and format hard disk partitions. Once we're in here, it's probably gonna pop up automatically for you, but if not, we can right click right here and initialize disk. You can see we've got that 24 terabyte drive right here. Initialize disk, and you'll see we've got two options, NBR, which is the older standard, and GPT, which is the newer one. Now it gives us a little warning here telling us that uh, GPT partition style is not recognized by all previous versions of Windows. 
They're talking older Windows versions. If you're on Windows 10, Windows 11, you're not going to have an issue. Newer kernels of Linux are also going to support this. We're going to go with GPT. Choose OK. It's now initialized. From the drive, we'll need to format it. I'm just going to right click, new simple volume, choose next, and we can assign it a drive letter. I'm going to go with drive D here. Next, NTFS. That's what I want to go with. Allocation unit size. We're going to go default and volume label. We can name this what we'd like. So I'm just going to go with 24 TV. Choose next, finish. It's going to format that drive for us. And uh, as soon as this is done, we can start using it. We'll head down here and you can see we've now got our 24 terabyte drive installed. So we've got 21.8 terabytes of free space here. First thing I wanted to do was just run a quick speed test on this. So I'm going to use Crystal Disk Mark from the drop down. We'll go with this one. We'll just run the basic test. And to tell you the truth, I'm actually really impressed by what kind of performance we're seeing here. Nowhere close to an M.2 SSD, but we're not looking for those kind of speeds. We're not going to be running the operating system from this. This is more of supplemental storage, just so we have a ton of storage for our Steam games. And running a Steam game from something that can read and write at up to 300 megs a second is going to work out just fine. And I figured while we're here, I'll give you a quick rundown on how to set up this drive with Steam. It's actually super easy. From settings, we're going to go to storage right here. We've got a drop down. So this has been going to my SSD, but we want to add a drive. Steam is automatically going to find another drive on your system. So you can use this. It works out really well. It's just going to put it right there on the root. Or you can choose another location on that drive or a whole nother drive in general. But I'm going to leave the stock location that it found for me because that's exactly why I wanted to install this. We'll go ahead and add. Now from the drop down, we've got that 24 terabyte drive here. I'm going to set this as my default because I want all of my new games to download over here. And I'll give you an idea. We'll just go ahead, install. You can see that this is automatically chosen, but we've got the other drive if we want to go back over there. So we can just install from here. And of course, if you want to transfer games to that new drive from within Steam, it's pretty easy to do. We'll head back to storage. And uh, from the drop down, you'll see we're on my SSD. This is what I've got installed right now. I'm going to choose, let's just do uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We'll check this one off. Move. Already knows that I want to move it over to that 24 terabyte drive that we set up with Steam. Choose move. And it'll go ahead and move it for us. And you can do this with your whole setup if you want to. As long as the game doesn't need to be updated at the time of moving it to a new drive, it'll go ahead and do it through Steam for us. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really hope this helped you out choosing a drive for your setup. Again, if you're looking for a home NAS, I would go with that Iron Wolf Pro. You could also use those Exos if you don't need that recovery, but they do draw more energy. But when it comes down to a gaming rig needing some supplemental storage, I can highly recommend Seagate's Barracuda Drive. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more, picking up a new hard drive, I will leave links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.